Hello, all you creatures out there in D&D land. It is time for the crone to boil a few people in the crucible again. We've got interesting things tonight. A couple of people. <laughs> He's already shaking his head. Uh, they, we've got a couple of people trying frantically to get ready behind the scenes. So we've got a couple of black screens there. But other than that, uh, we're not doing too bad. So... Hopefully we'll all get together here. As usual, we're running panicked at the last minute. What else is new on this? So does anybody have anything to report before we start kind of summarizing this and getting it going? My steak quesadilla was delicious. I've been invaded by a mimic. <laughs> I love it. Hope everybody had a... I love that. Hope everybody had a good Father's and Day an weekend. Uh, this is our first mission in my new apartment, and I had a car accident today, so yay. Oh, so we get a high and a low. Yeah, yeah I like to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, are you okay? I would, uh, I would assume you're I'm fine. actually a little sore, but other than that, not and bad. I've been in a car accident as well. You'll be, you'll be sore for a few days. How's but, like... your car? Oh, it's totaled. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. Sorry to hear that, Sam. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's his well, life, c'est la vie. Yeah, and you can, for a couple of hours, you can go into a life where you have a little more control over what you do, unlike real life. I think that's why we all play D&D, is we all want to escape real life. A little bit of escapism. Life. Yes. yes. Um, I have thunderstorms happening around me, so I may disappear. Nah. <laughs> I hope your computer stays solid and your lights just flicker like some evil villain like thing in the background because that would just be dope as well. Yeah. <laughs> I hope nothing happens and all the electricity just remains perfectly stable. You just occasionally hear the pitter patter of rain in the background. I want that along option. With yeah. thunder, along with the, rum the the gentle lulling rumble of thunder. I'd also just like to say, people, I don't care that this that grooming salons are open. Please stop calling. I'd like a break. <laughs> you made this decision. You did. I didn't make any freaking decision. She just works there. She just has a paycheck, but she'd like to have a life, too. <clears throat> I actually don't have a paycheck, but that's beside the point. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. We've got lots of bad news today. What's that Excuse one? me. <laughs> Let me take a sip. Too bad it's not a sip of something that would pep me up. Well, coffee's not too bad. Anyway, we are back with the water dance. And when we left off before Father's Day, we had an interesting thing going on. They kind of halfway stumbled into discovering... A secret door after a secret door in the cellar. They managed to find things. I've got a couple of fill-in things that I'll need to do before we go on. When you went into this room, and the internet's going back and forth, uh, when you went in, into this room that you're in now, um, you found bars of gold stacked floor to ceiling and probably five to six feet deep from front to back in this alcove that was in there and you remembered that you had been told by the shepherd that Mert said the castle lanterns had come in very suddenly and withdrawn all their funds out of the bank and it had caused this run on the bank Meanwhile, what you had come from in the back of you, behind in the area, kind of zoom in on this so you can kind of see the two areas there. This area back here, I don't have the furniture in, but the whole right side uh, over, let me get a line, the whole right side over this way is wine racks, and there are a number of very expensive looking goblets of various kind, in, including another one of those prominent shelves that have numerous of the uh, Seamorph symbol goblets, 
ceremonial sort of goblets displayed very prominently on these wine racks along with gold and silver goblets uh, in mixed in with the wine racks, obviously a display showing off their fine wines and their fine legendary goblets that they have, which have been all over this place. Now the gang basically used pretenses to get half of the crew down into the cellar little by little after exploring the manor upstairs while the, what we're euphemistically calling the gals, um, are uh, upstairs occupying uh, um, Amelia, whatever her name is, yeah, Amalia, uh, Castellanter, keeping her occupied with talk of the party. So I have put a party token here so that everybody can see things, otherwise you'd be blind on this screen with the dynamic lighting that's on it. So I put a party token on. The party token is this, just there for the convenience of the group that is not actually present. They are upstairs with Amalia. Is there anything you want to ask about what went on, where you were, Amalia's situation, the room you were in, any review that you want to do before we go on? You basically have discovered this room hiding the gold bars and some stairs going down into the dark. What do so you, you want to say? Know? Sorry, uh, you said that there's gold bars. Is there anything else in this room that we see? No. This is this room appears to be the treasury. I mean, outside of the stairs going down. Right. I, I uh, meant there's anything physical that we can see that isn't stairways, doors, gold bars. I'm assuming the walls are blank. Yeah, it's a very plain, it's underground, and it's been a bit plastered in this area, but it is clearly hewn stone and earth. You are clearly below the manor. Varys just wants to move on and get out of there as soon as possible. Cashin wants to eye that gold a little closer. How are you eyeing it? Uh, just, uh, looking at, looking to see if, uh, if it has any, uh, markings on it and how many there are. Every one of the bars has an official stamp of the treasury of, of the bank of, um, the Golden Goose treasury. That's what I'm trying to say. There's a official imprint in each of the bars indicating it's an official warranted bar of gold, registered bar of gold. Mm -hmm. and, and how many are there? A very great deal of them. Like I said, they're stacked about seven feet deep, about 10 feet high, and what, 20 feet long? Ooh, Cashin said, just says to himself, hmm, so this is so this is where their fortune. So this is where they stored their fortune, and he uh, he just uh, has his hand out there, very close to the bars. Well, we can't see that because we're all invisible. No, but we probably would have heard him muttering him to himself. Yep. So he's yeah. He's just gonna say, "See, see, eyes on the prize." I know you can't see, but that's not an excuse. I can hear. Cashin oh, I'm saying the prize, all right. <laughs> yeah, I could hear Cashin saying, "Oh, yeah, I can. See. I've got my eyes on the prize." Yes. We have a larger pressing matter than these bars of gold. Cash in. Let's get keep to it. Mm, okay. Oh, by the way, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I actually recall telling this to Shepard, but you may like to hear that... Uh, that apparently the Castle Lanterns once owned the Golden Goose Bank. I don't, I think you already said that I did not know this. I, I think this was a role that only he made. Yeah, it was uh, outside. Right. Yeah, he, he, I think he told it to the shepherd, but he didn't tell it to anyone else. It, yes, it makes sense considering the past of the Castle Lanterns. But that's neither here or there. 
we should get going. Be back soon, my sweets. <laughs> if you did want to grab one, on the way out would probably be the best idea. We should not say anything um, unless it's our current target. See, see, I'm saying this because I care about you, but you need professional help, and that's coming from me. <laughs> These are the castle. Oh, Anthers. I know. These are the castle Anthers. They probably have their gold warded so that even if one is taken off, that something will happen. It is best that we leave it alone. Mm, you make a good point. I'll make my way down. All right. Now, before I sw swap them and the the visual eye token to the lower level, uh, what are the girls doing upstairs? That's Epiphany and and uh, Lockery and uh, oh yeah, uh, Relian's cousin. I forget es Esvel. Uh, probably we're still in that big room-ish area, right? Yeah, or did we move on to another location? A, well, you went out of the library, which was quite large, into a okay. large parlor short, sort of room, which was clearly set up to be a reading room. That was where you saw the journal. You also, mm -hmm. at one time, she went out to uh, do something with the children who were playing in the garden, and mm -hmm. you saw some things out in the butterfly garden. There's a door that opens directly out into the garden. In fact, the door that opens out has a stained glass window in it, a circular stained glass window in it that has uh, inset glass of a butterfly. It's... Ah. Kind of, you can see through it in some clear sections, but it's even decorated with a butterfly on the door. Uh, Nakur will, of course, make the most, just she'll continue to, up, not appraise, but um, give the sort of like, I, I, looking around, you have some very beautiful pieces of work. The stained glassing on the doors downstairs were just amazing. Normally, I see. A, normally, where I'm from, the stained glass is usually with um, uh, the churches to depict uh, heroic feats of the gods, that, the gods that many people worship. Well, we, of course, we have our various shrines to see a more, but mm. I want to have some beauty surrounding me, and especially with the little people in town, when I have them in for meals and to help the poor, I want them to be surrounded for a few minutes by beauty. They have so little of it in their lives. I can absolutely respect something like that. Uh, curio curiosity, this room is huge. What do you normally use it for? Oh, this is primarily the Lord's reading room, although the rest of us use it as well. This, the adjacent library is quite large, and we want something just a little bit more comfortable to sit and read in and sip our tea. And, of course, as you see, a glass of wine for the Lord. He likes to give me it. He Sorry. likes to make Sorry. notes as he reads. Uh, he, uh, oh, I see he left his journal open. I, I, I should probably close that. And she walks up and picks up the wine glass and moves it over and closes the journal that you had looked into prior. Yeah, I'll just I'll just pretend like I had never saw the journal at all. It's like, oh, there's a book there. Um, she, she just says, uh, I don't have many. Normally, our libraries are very uh, centralized. Not even the private homes have uh, libraries this grand. I'm actually quite amazed by a lot of the books you have. They're fantastic. Oh, really? I find that quite amazing. Many of the noble houses have extensive libraries. In fact, that's the primary resource for most of our readings, our historical works, and so forth. The best library in the city, of course, is in the castle itself. Be uh, our my at least my section of the nation is very um we're open to attempt to educate to the best of ourselves. Uh, one of our family sayings is, uh, a country is only as uh, only as strong as its weakest link. 
so what we what we attempt to do is to not put everyone on the same equal playing field, but uh, if there is a person who is poor, we find them a task in life that that even if they choose to remain in in the wallows, they have something to enrich their lives with, be it uh, through assisting in the libraries to copy notations or um, just in general work, helping to clean, things of that nature. It, it, uh, best, I, I am not sure how to explain it very well, but we are different. Yes, uh, perhaps your poor are a little cut above the average. I'm afraid uh, some of our uh, lowest are really difficult to deal with. They don't seem to want to better themselves. When you give them a job, they they hold it for maybe a day and then disappear on you. You can't count on them. They're they're very flibbity jibbit about everything. Hmm. But I do try. I once oh, only... uh, at the uh, head of the week, I frequently offer a a dinner for some of the poorest to at least give them a meal. This is, as you know, a 10-day event that I do every every 10 days. I actually have heard. Um, I remember hearing, uh, murmuring about it uh, at the tavern, actually. So I do my best to eliminate the, the issues of poverty in our streets, one way or another. Ah, uh, well, since I'm since I'm owning the troll skull and working out of that, I would like to help do my part at least. If they are looking for work, even if it's just cleaning, I will happily hire them for a day. Oh, excellent. I'll send them your way if I come across any that don't strike me as riffraff. Um, well, as to the party planning now, I understand that some of you need invitations to the party. I'll be happy to write out a formal invitation for you. Uh, the more the merrier. We, we want to throw quite the large event. I intend to, to have people talking about this for generations to come. Uh, yes, uh, I believe her associate and uh, myself, at least, uh, were looking to, looking to attend. I yes. had actually heard about it uh, at the the, uh, the parade that happened recently, and I was like, "Oh, I wish to make a, I wish to at least be more neighborly to everyone." I know. She calls out uh, for uh, a name of a servant. I believe it's Laela, something like that. Laeba. Um, she calls out for Laeba, and um, the butler that met you at the door comes in and bows rather stiffly. His eyes flick back and forth between the lady and the group of you a few times. As with last week, you're getting a lot of tugs on your sleeve from your visitor, Epiphany. Um, and um, I, he says, pardon my lady, but if you'll recall, uh, Leba is busy handling the preparations for the ceremony. Oh, oh yes, of course. I, well, would you go get some of my fine paper? I'd like to write a formal invitation for some of our guests here to be sure that they will be welcome at our big event. And he just, he bows uh, and he kind, his eyes kind of glance over you uh, in a way that is very poker-faced, and he says, I will be most happy to do that, madame. I think that they will enjoy the party and the festivities greatly. And he disappears and is gone about five minutes and returns with a right small writing desk, lap desk, and fine parchment and uh, envelopes and inkwell and a quill. And she immediately writes out very in beautiful calligraphy writes out formal invitation and signs it and hands it to each of you. Esbel, of course, already has hers. Ah, 
Thank you. You are a very gracious woman. I do look forward to attending. Well, if there is nothing else, um, perhaps we should see to the preparations that your the rest of your guild men have uh, seen, whether there's anything going on with that. I do have uh, things that I must attend to, of course. Oh, yes. Uh, if you don't mind it, would you would you like for me to accompany you to at least uh, oversee things? I'm mostly curious about how things will go. All right, so we will say that for a few more minutes, she will go into the kitchen through the dining room and everything that you saw before. She'll go into the kitchen and will be overseeing this officious cook and so forth that's getting everybody to run around. They are cleaning up after the charred disaster of the previous time where a pan suddenly lit on fire and one of the lesser cooks, if the group was there, they would note that one of the cooks is no longer present, is uh, somewhere else, and they He's are- shish -kebabbed. He is- I've ruined the man's career. Uh, the rest of the cooks are frantically cleaning up under the sour eye of this head cook who's officiously got his arms crossed watching what they're doing, and he immediately begins to apologize to the lady as she walks in. All right, so back to the four in the depths. You are going down into semi-darkness. There is dim light because every so often there is an iron sconce on the wall with a candle burning in it. But it is not bright light, it is dim. And I am um. going to put the group of you. You are at the top of the map. Mm -hmm. Top right, okay. The adventurers go down the hole. Yep. You come out in this bend mm -hmm. as the, the narrow five-foot hallway bends around the corner. And immediately in front of you, in the floor, you can see spiral stairs going down yet again. And widening out to the sides of you, you can see wider hallways going off left and right, north and south, in this zone. Let me just zoom out just a bit here so that people can see more of what's going on. And this is basically all you see at this point. Uh, we're now two floors down from the main level, correct? That's correct. You are minus two, floor minus two. Okay. Uh, Shepard, do you sense it coming in a low, vo <clears throat> low voice, obviously. Shepard, do you sense it coming from below or... My, on our same level. My detection has already dissipated. It only lasted 10 minutes. I do believe we are on the correct floor, though. All right, then. So we just have to be quick and methodical. Um, Where did you last sense it? I, I would assume, because like it only reaches out 30 feet. For my yep. detective spells, you just, yeah. I would assume you. I would assume that this is the correct level. I just don't know which direction. I just know that there's consecration here somewhere on yes. this floor. Well, it it may be below you because, as I said, when you were detecting it, that it was right at the limit of what you could sense. Oh. So it is possible that it could be below you. But it is, you are narrowing in on it because obviously if you go too far afield, you're going to be out of that sphere where you could sense it. So it's just a matter right. of exactly where you were at the time and how close over it. But yeah, you would have had 
a sensation of it being within a sphere of 30 feet that could have reached down one Then I reckon more. what I said about uh, that it's on this floor, that it's possibly on this floor. It is possible that it is still one floor below us. I built the consecration at the limit of my detection. I mean, according to all the cliche villain hooplas you hear in stories, they always hide stuff down at the very bottom. Maybe. That's true. From um, a very distant thing, it, it just very faint, you hear chanting. Only this is not like a full ceremony going on. The chanting will go on. You can't detect what language it is. You're not close enough. It's too far away. But the chanting will go on for maybe a minute and a half and will abruptly stop. And then there will be a long break. Uh, and once in a while, you hear a loud, kind of loud voice speaking. Again, too far away to determine what they are saying. It sounds like a woman's voice, but you can't tell more than that. And then after this brief interruption, the chanting will start again, pretty much repeating this cycle. Sometimes it goes a little longer, sometimes a little shorter. So, uh, anyone else hear that? All it definitely sounds like a cult. All in favor of the bad decision of going towards the creepy chanting? Well, it's visible, just as long as you're quiet. Uh, honestly, if you want, I know that Cashin and I are the more sneaky of the group. Uh, if I, you want, we can go check it out and come back. Uh, I am not going to the cult. We're just going to sneak up on them. Hold on, Shep, I, th I thought this was kind of your whole deal. No. I am... If it was just the Castle Lanterns, I would have gone in full of fury. I am divine blood in an entire round saturated with evil. I am not meant to be here. Well, you can't stay here alone. You've got to keep going forward. We need to find the consecration, and we need to leave. She makes a good point, but we can at least get an idea of who the members are, if we can see. I am in favor of going to find out what it is, even if we don't do anything with it. I'm with him. Then you go alone. And what's Ralph well, you, been that's... thinking in this? Oh, I think I heard his phone. He might be off answering the call. Will you at least wait for us here? We will be right back. If I hear any disruptions, I am leaving. That sounds fine by me. I'm not planning on any disruptions. Cashin, let's go. Mm-hmm. And so where is the source of the uh, of the chanting? The source appears to be to ahead of you in that hall. So to the west. It may be below you, but you can't really determine that the sound kind of bounces around in this chamber where you are now, but you might be able to see if you kind of get out and around, see what you've got, or it might be down below mm -hmm. you on the stairs. You just know that in general, it kind of seems to be coming from this way somewhere, but you're not exactly sure. Well, Cashin is going to go north. I'm going to put the party out here on the stairs so that they can, the rest of you can see what's going on here. All right, as Cashin comes... Keep an eye out for traps. As Cashin comes up to this area, he notices that there uh, is what appears to be um, uh, like almost a guard room sort of thing that is in 
uh, this area to your left. It's got a few weapons, just a few ordinary weapons, and kind of in a, an armament holder and some benches. And um, there are some brocaded drapes, however, in it, kind of ratty looking ones, but they kind of decorate it, try to make it a little bit more ordinary. But there's nobody in that room at all at this point in time. When you are standing in the middle of the hall, Shepard probably can see it a little bit as well, there appears to be three rooms down on this end of the hall as well. You can see some doors that open up from each side down here. And then the hall goes slightly around a bend here. Okay. And does the uh, and does the noise and does the chanting sound louder here? Yes, it sounds a little bit louder as you come to this bend in the hall to the north. All right, I think it's I, coming this way. I check for traps. Give me a uh, investigation roll for your traps. Uh, my investigation. Can I do perception? Uh, it depends on whether you are actually looking for traps or you're just generally looking around going, hmm, I wonder if there's any place that a trap could be. Or if you're actually searching, That's, it's investigation. Yeah, I'm not getting down and like okay. inspector yeah. gadgeting it. I'm just generally looking around for places they could be. Okay. Perception then. Yay. That's huh? pretty good. 24 is a pretty good roll. Let me get my dice roll back up on the screen so people can see what these are. Uh, so you, the floor seems to be uh, pretty clear. You don't see anything that looks suspicious at this location. It, um, in fact, it looks kind of well used and somewhat well cleaned, a little better than you would expect some dungeon down dingy place underneath a manor to be. It looks like once in a while people actually go through and clean this area. There's nothing here. Uh, Jim, would you like... I'm going... Varys is going to be continually looking for traps. Do you just want to use the same roll, or would you like me to roll new ones every time? I'll, I'll say that section? you are... This is the roll. You're being very attentive as you go, and that okay. this is your attentive roll that you are making. Um, so you are able to get around it. You come uh, into a slightly wider portion, just seems to be uh, a larger portion where several people could gather if they wanted to. There's a couple of small stools and benches in this area, but nothing very much. Looks like people have used it at some point in time. And then the hall narrows down again over to the left to more of a narrow hallway again and every step that you take in that direction chanting grows just a little bit louder come on let's get going okay i'm right behind you so far you've seen nothing that looks at all suspicious again the floor looks well swept and clean more and more you are seeing these tapestries lining the wall that don't seem to have any great sort of uh, discernible image on them. There are just, there's a lot of geometric designs. Diamond shapes are very prevalent in the geometric design as you get closer and closer to this sound. As Cashin and Varys come up to this slight narrowing in the hallway, you are able to determine the noise is quite loud. Once again, you hear this interruption in the chanting, and you hear a woman's voice very... Uh, it sounds like an older woman's voice. Uh, she is very officious. She is demanding that people line up. You hear various things. How long are you going to listen to what she is saying? Uh, probably for a, for a full minute. And Cashin's going to make sure to be right here she, to get as much as a good sound as possible. She is.
is giving directions and apparently she is having people practice something you hear things about this has to be perfect when we do it this has never been done in this scale before and i will not tolerate the slightest mistake Lord Castellanter will be the one doing the ceremony that I'm only standing in for at this moment. We cannot have a single slip up if we are going to have this go right. Now I want you to show me where you are going to be standing. Remember, there could be as many as 30 of our members down here, all ranks, and I want to make sure that the group of you keep a strong eye on them since some of them are not of the nobility and we don't know exactly what to expect of them. But this is going to be something that if the slightest thing goes wrong, horrible things could come of it. So again, from the top, I want to hear this with perfection. And the chanting begins again. Uh, Cashin, I think we've learned pretty much all we're going to learn. All right. Let's go back down. The, um, the, the sound, by the way, seems to be, you are looking at a balcony railing, and the sound appears to be coming from over the railing and down below you when you get out to this location. Oh, so. Meanwhile, meanwhile so back down here. The, meanwhile, back with the shepherd and Relly, and Relly is just like rubbing his invisible sh friend's shoulders and says, everything's going to be okay. Just keep breathing. And when you look over, uh, creep up and look over, give me a dexterity roll, Varys. Ah, oh, okay. Bum, bum, bum. And I need... hey, oh, that, that, was, that was a saving throw, oh, so it would technically be three less. Hey. Actually, yeah, so it would be 24 dex, instead of 27. Dexterity save. I think I said a dexterity roll. It would be a dexterity save, so that is accurate. Hey. The floor uh, beneath you is in poor shape. It doesn't look like it was a trap. It looks like they have, they need to do some masonry repair. And the floor underneath you, Varus, crumbles and a hole opens up that would have been big enough to swallow you if you hadn't done a quick step and managed to jump off of the hole just at the right moment when you did. I'm going to put a something here to mark where it is so you know where this hole opened up. Basically, that's where the hole is. With a great deal of loud clattering, the pieces of the masonry clatter into the hall below where these people were talking, and suddenly everything goes dead silent. <coughs> all the chanting stops, all the talking stops. I think we should go. I think we should do. I messed up. You hear, we will... give me mm -hmm. a perception roll for hearing if you have any extra. I always say for hearing. Uh, no bonus for hearing, but I have pretty good perception. You hear a very soft speaking. It is the woman speaking again, and she goes, Go and see what that was. We need to get back to the others. Yeah, yeah. We pink panther back to uh, <laughs> Shepard and Relian. Exit stage right. <laughs> get against the wall. There may be some people coming. Uh, can we can we do stage whispers like talk in normal voice but okay yeah get against the wall there's people coming there is sometime you occasionally hear a little bit of a sound from below very quiet but you don't hear much um and it's see you guys are still invisible a head pokes up through the stairwell that you are looking at, this stairwell, a head pokes up, 
It is wearing a red hooded cape. The hood comes very low over the face, and they are wearing a kind of cheap wooden and painted gilt mask that is made to look like a demon or devil. It has horns coming out and is painted in a... Do we recognize oh, this see, person? We could take you Not, the disguise. All you see is a, is a mask. You see a devil mask under a red hood. No clothing on or anything that yes. we can see. They are wearing a red cape completely covering them and partially covering their uh, face and they are so wearing it, a devil's mask over their face. So so they're basically Batman with the cape. Okay. I I didn't know if it was like just, you know, a regular cape and we could see No, their it's, body or... they are completely okay. cloaked in this red has some arcane symbols on it and things, but it's they're completely cloaked in it with this mask over their face. You have no idea what they are. Yeah, I just stay against the wall then. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, give me a stealth roll with advantage. Yay, invisibility. Yay for Ooh. super sneaky oh. shoes. Advantage. Yeah, okay. with advantage. I was just going to say, hold on. <laughs> Okay, so all of you do well with advantage. Oh, no! Uh, Shepherd farts. I'm, I'm panicking. Yeah, Jeez, as, I'm... as this devil face pokes up, I would imagine Shepherd might choke or make a sound. And the person was starting to walk, I'm going to use the party symbol to indicate it, he was starting to walk over to where the thing was, and it stops and comes back and it looks around, but it does not see you. I stay still. I'm basically, uh, what's her name? Ripley? From Alien? The... Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a creepy scene. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, he look it the person looks this way and that way, and you can almost see them leaning forward like they're. But they don't hear anything more from you. Basically, there was two roles here. One was its general awareness of the DC of what you had to beat, which you didn't beat, and then his ability to actually discern anything, and he doesn't have the ability. So eventually, after a moment, he turns, I, I keep saying he, but you really don't know, it could be he, she, it, whatever. It's they. The person in the red cloak turns and walks down the hall, uh, is down there very briefly, and then turns back to you and goes down the stairwell again. So you hear talking eventually in the lower hall area that where you where all that clattering happened. And after several minutes of this tension going on, finally there is a clear louder clearing of the throat and the woman's voice says, All right, now where were we? Back to your places immediately. Uh, I'll say in stage whisper, we will try to avoid going down those stairs if there's a creature climbing, whatever we in these rooms here. Yeah, sounds good. Be careful where you step. The uh, masonry seems to be a little worn. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and start moving for these doors, and I'll look the around doors, to see if they're... The doors oh, are wooden. They have okay. iron bands on them and iron hinges, the piano hinge type of hinge. Uh, they have a lock on the outside, all of which are dangling open, I mean like a padlock. The doors can be so, locked from the outside, and in the doors, uh, right about your base height, there is a small door with a fastening device on it that can be opened. A little wood door that can be opened in the... I'll look at that little 
the little like basically a little window in the door correct correct like i i opened up the head yeah i'll go ahead and open up the the little window of the door that i'm at right now okay you look into a very dimly the only light that is coming is through the peephole that you were looking through and you kind of see light come in with as you open that it is quite dark in there you see it is unoccupied and that there are manacles hanging from the wall. I see no weapon. This room is likely not what we're looking for. The other two what doors are identical to the one you just looked in. It looks like possibly someplace they'll keep a prisoner. Mm, cells. And, uh, and uh, Cashin uh, makes his way towards the locked one. There's no locked ones. All of them are, the padlocks are oh. open on all of them. Eh, well, I guess we'll all check them to see if they have anyone inside. All of the cells are identical. All of them are currently empty. All right. Waste of time here. There's no other place besides where you went to find the cult that was out. Mm -hmm. And by the way, no... a little uh, addition that I didn't say at the time, when you were at the balcony railing, you would have noticed that was an identical balcony across from you, but there, uh, you don't see any way to get to it from this location. There's another balcony. There were two balconies, one on the other, one on the other side of here. We can try and find our way over there. It is possible that the way in could be built down below. Let's see if there's any secret doors here, or else we'll have to go down again. All right, I'll look. Uh, and I'm guessing I'll do an investigation. Uh, actually, you're going to have to do a perception roll on these because uh, you are going along the wall trying to discern if there's any oddities or anything. All right, and uh, does my uh, deep stool thing uh, grant me it any bonuses not, to not that? for that, only for opening I, things. I would be helping them in this case, though, since I did make the suggestion. All right, you can, so, you can, can add the help. Give them advantage? Yes, you can give All them right. advantage. All right. So give me a percentage. No, I mean, no, I mean, no, I mean. And you have advantage. So with a 17, you search all the walls. You don't find anything that looks out of the ordinary. Possibly back where you were, there might be something. But all up and down this hallway, it looks like this is just what you see. An entryway where they kept prisoners and there was some kind of guard room that is used at times. And as I said, it's fairly clean, like possibly it's used a lot. Nothing here. Guess we have to go down back the way we were. Down? No. To the balcony. We don't know where the what entryway is to the balcony. There's a balcony over here. Yeah, they There's were the on a balcony. Here? They were on a balcony. That was where the stone fell. Uh, and there oh. was another one identical to it on the opposite side. So basically, when you go out there, you'll see that there is a, a line drawn on the map, and you'll look across to another balcony, and below is the tile floor of the chamber below you. So you uh, can am... you can go up to that point safely. They they determined there's nothing unsafe up to the point where Cashin went. Except for the cultists that the shepherd fears right now. <laughs> is, is shepherd kind of lugging behind? Uh, the shepherd is staying in the room. He said he's not going into the same room with the cults. All right. So what is Relian doing? I'm going to try to coax the shepherd along. Uh, Shep, look. I know you're worried. I know you're nervous. Even if you don't want to admit it, you're probably a little scared. But this is the way forward. If you want this to do, if if you want to, uh, God damn it. 
if you want to do some of your greater good crap that I know you're a big fan of, if you want closure, if you want to see this case finally solved, we need to keep moving or else we're going to get found. And I'm going to try to persuade him. I would, <laughs> I would try to persuade him back. Rationally speaking, if they did not see the weapon that we are looking for when they were on the balcony, we should be going down below and not towards the cult that would very likely want to kill me for their dark god. That's fine. I just don't want you to stay in one place. Give me competing persuasion rolls. No, because I'm. I agree with them. I oh, think okay. a good place to go would be down. But yeah, I, that's what I want to do is go down. I don't want to go to the balcony. All right. Shall we say that Barris and Cashin remain there during this discussion? All right. And just went off by uh, themselves. Sure. Yeah. All right. So. At this point, Relian and Shepard are more for going down than going across the balcony. Varus, um, that line is the limit. You would have, uh, you would see very clearly up to the end of your, your sight. Let me do something here so I can see exactly what you've got. Yeah, at that point, you wouldn't be able really to see what's on the far end of that other balcony. You can see, you know, the only thing I can tell you is that you know that when you went, like, this area it was good masonry. It wasn't until you got over here that you had troubles. So if you go very carefully, you probably will be on good masonry. Obviously, you don't know how good the Varys, floor is in this direction. Varys is going to come over here. Uh, he's going to get down. He's going to go prone, and he's going to peek his head over the balcony, and he's going to look under. Do, are all of the supports under the balcony there? Uh, the supports that you're seeing there that are black on your screen are supports up to the roof, which is... 10 right. feet above you. The, the chamber below is an enormous chamber. It goes all the way up. Um, <clears throat> and there are supports under this balcony as well. And where you are standing right now, I just checked, you can very vaguely notice off in the extreme distance, right, let me get the arrow again, right here you notice an opening going back on that balcony. It is the only thing anywhere on that balcony that could possibly be an access point. I am going to look across. Same thing. You just see an identical balcony just like yours. All of these look like solid walls, same as you have behind you. Balcony railing here, just like you have. Posts, just like you have. And the only thing that looks like it might possibly be an opening is this area over here. Varys is going to turn to Cashin and say, I can clear that distance. I wouldn't I wouldn't risk it. I can see the opening. I could probably go around from the other side. Yes, but what if the railing crumbles under you and they and next time they won't be so quick to dismiss crumbling crumbling masonry? This is true. Just giving options. Well, and, and Cashin, uh, I mean, I guess Cashin can clearly see there's no way here to the other side. That's right. It's just walls there. All right. Let's go back. I guess we have to go down. Before you do, you guys should maybe do a little quick look around and see if there is a weapon in there. Uh, All right. We will. Sure. sure. Is there either a sword or like a tomb or anything like that? These are, they look like they're peanut gallery things where people can watch the ceremony below is actually what it looks like. They are completely devoid. There are a couple of benches against each of the back walls where you are and on the other side, some kind of uh, velvet looking benches that are open underneath wooden legs and so forth. But there is no other furniture, no sarcophagi, no tables, no cabinets, no nothing. So it's a viewing balcony. 
Yes, it looks very much like. Oh God! Oh God! We're going. We're going to meet the Statler and Waldorf of demon worshippers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Varys turns and heads back to the shepherd. You already checked the southern rooms for any other sort of secrets? They, they were just prison cells. I would assume that they are meant to be warded from escape. I do not think that there would be anything inside for us to find. And it looks like our only option is down, down, down to Demon Town. More like Cultist Town. We didn't know if there were any demons here yet. See, you ruined my another one of my jokes. I'm setting your bed on fire. There are demons about. <sighs> All right, let's go. All right. I should say devils, not demons. I'm gonna gather your tokens up. Don't touch them for a moment, because I'm gonna gather you up and move you down. Touch, touch, touch. Uh, every, invariably, I move everybody together, and somebody goes, "I wasn't there," and pulls it back where I had it. It's like, no, no, no. You can look. You can look. Slap, your, not slap your hand if you move it. So, no, I'm doing it. I'm just saying, somebody frequently will if I doing this. Let me pull out so I can see both sections here, and I actually want to get rid of one thing. I don't need it. Now I can easily. You guys, and move you down to the bottom of the stairs. Now, you are at the bottom of the stairs at this point. Uh, directly as you look uh, to your east, as you come off the stairs and you look directly to the east, you see a double door with what looks to once have been uh, metal, uh, possibly precious metal, symbols of Seamorph. Each door has a silver-colored chalice, but it's been bent and deformed and apparently hit, even looks a little melted. And the sun is only barely visible. It has run down the door in like a long strip, almost like tears, down the door of gold that has run down the door. To your north, there is an alcove. And the alcove has a side-to-side, -side, almost 10 foot wide, floor to ceiling, probably 15 foot high portrait. Comes all the way from the floor, all the way to the ceiling. And this is what it looks like. Fortunately, I have to make it kind of small because otherwise the dynamic lighting will cut it off. And I'll pull it forward. Give me just a moment. It'll swap. Thank you. I'm going to pull it to the front. Why it's not in front of the party token, I don't know. All right. So, yeah, but you'll see your own. But basically, this is a picture of a, a, a very refined-looking man, el somewhat elderly. He looks like he may be of tiefling blood, potentially. He has small horns coming out of his head. He is dressed in a flowing red cape. Uh, he is holding a long... It's not quite a staff, and it's more than a cane, and it has a jewel, red jewel on the top of it, on the pommel of it. And beside him is standing a vicious-looking, emaciated dog that has enormous fangs that curl up around its face. It is the kind of picture you would see in manners of the Lord with his dog sort of pictures. But this, this lord and this dog don't look like any pictures you've ever seen before. They're pretty creepy-looking pictures. I need Shepard and Relian to give me a religion roll with advantage. Anyone else can give me a religion roll, but you do not have advantage. Seven. 
So if I were a betting man, is that who I think it is? Uh, none of you can see this, but Relian has dipped into his robes. He has retrieved his holy symbol of Mistra, and he's holding it it's, it out in front of him like a protective charm and just quietly chanting to himself, no, 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 no. Relian yeah, sorry, and Shepard clearly recognize what this is a portrait of. This is the Lord of the Nine Hells. So, if I were a betting man, uh, I'm guessing this is he who shall not be named. No, no, don't, don't, do not say his name. Not, not in front of one of his images. Do, don't even, don't even think it. I'm turning away from the painting. I will put it off the screen to get it out of the way of our images right now, but uh, that is what is here against the wall to the north. That's that's what that picture frame is. It's, and it's framed in what looks to be pure gold. The frame, by the way, is carved with the images of snakes. Molded would be a better word because it looks like it's pure gold, so therefore it would probably have been cast in this shape. Well, moving on. Let's look at this door. And Cashin is looking at it. The, give me a either an investigation if you're trying to figure out what went on with it, or if you're trying to just like kind of look at it, look at, you know, how does the door open? Depending on how deeply you are investigating this, give me an investigation or perception roll. I'm just going to be looking for a lock. The door does not appear to have any locks on it whatsoever. It looks like they will swing open quite easily. The, they're outside of the fact that these chalices of Seamorph are terribly deformed and melted. There is no nothing that seems to indicate anything unusual about the door outside of it just swinging open. The Casalantos could face their gods. Well, that's rather obvious. So, is there a way for it to obviously open, for us to get it open? No, it doesn't appear to have a handle, and it also doesn't appear to have any kind of latch or lock. It looks like just a, a door that you could put your hand again and swing it open. All right. Everyone stand back. Don't have to tell me twice. And I'm Go going right ahead. To, I'm going to, I would prefer like maybe stand further back just in case there may be like a, an explosion trap or something. And then, yeah, I'm going to try and push the door open. Okay. I got to get this off. It's getting in my way. With his hands? This is the... It may be the face, but it is a symbol of Seamorph and not devilry. I think I'm fine. Give me also, no, I'm saying the uh, shepherd has finally exerted himself. Well, if I... Yeah, I have to open the door with my hand, because if I use a spell, I lose my invisibility. I know. Smart Give ass. me a dexterity <laughs> Just thing. do it. <sighs> There it is. I should have. I should have been. Yeah, I should have investigated. The door erupts in flames. Roll two d ten for me, please. You take seven flame damage. And I'm assuming I'm no longer invisible. Uh, I'm going to. Invisibility? It is warded. And I'm going to roll. To him. We'll take it off. Oh, hold on. Uh, crap. Relian's trying to see if he can hear anybody, like, upstairs movement. Like, did anyone hear that? The fire makes almost no sound. It was a magical flame that came forth, and it what didn't do a, like, whoop sort of thing, but uh, 
the one thing that the shepherd notices as he pulls back from this burn that he took is that the flame is crawling up and around trying to almost avoid the symbols themselves of seamorph but the the whole area where you have to touch is in flame it basically is surrounding this symbol it's all the holy symbol is completely surrounded by flame i will take my mace and i will push the door at the seamorph symbol and see if i can open it that way when you reach with the maze, it's it's hot. You can tell that things are hot. That's why the precious metals have melted and run down the door. But you are able to push the door open. Let me take the closing thing off. And the doors are pushed I'm supposed open. to try something, but that works too. Oh, sorry. The flames kind of, over a period of time, as the doors stand open, the flames begin to slowly reduce down as if the, the area of the threshold may be the area that's been warded. I'll wait for the fire to dim down before I walk in and I'll tell the others we will figure out a way to leave once we actually have what we need. Keep an eye out for more traps. Yeah, so as yeah. I go in, I'm, I'm going to look around, make sure. Uh, I'm assuming I'm seeing, is this more gold or are these other things? Sarcophagi. That I'm seeing. They are oh, sarcophagi. Okay. All right, well, now that I actually don't have to worry about uh, losing my invisibility since it's uh, lost, I am going to go ahead and cast Detect Evil and Good one more time. All right. You detect the entire area around you is, an, is highly consecrated. You feel very comfortable in this area, as a matter of fact, except that you detect abnormalities in the planar existence of evil and good in some of these crypts in some of these uh, in the areas of some of these sarcophagi there seems to be something abnormal uh, okay. but they don't strike you as pure evil in and of themselves they just seem to be anomalies that you don't entirely like Behind you, coming from the west, is a sense of evil so strong that it almost knocks you into the room further that you're standing in. It, it's almost palpable. I'll move one square over to reflect that then. As you step in front of that sarcophagus, a ghostly form rises up out of the the room and fills it and a specter starts reaching out towards you to attack. It is actually uh, attacking. It is moving towards you with its hands out starting to attack. So you, uh, I'll give you one move, one action. Uh, I'm under the assumption that this is all castle lanterns, correct? Like this is a castle lantern crypt. I would ass I would assume that these are castle lanterns. It could be possible that there's others, but okay. No, this is the long lost Roscuro crypt. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, let me let me let me see what I can do. See if I even know. Half to the grave. Um, what is this? Got turn undead. I have turned undead, but I want to save it in case there's more. I don't want to use it on just one. What you should do channel. is you should run down the line, trigger all of the ghosts, and then use turn undead. Or let's not do that. <laughs> let's, let's do this in a way that I, I will stay alive. Okay. Um, You'll live. I'm, I'm gonna. Probably. I'm gonna say in celestial. Uh, uh, oh, what, what's the? Uh, they wouldn't be. It wouldn't be Asmodeus. 
Um, in the name of Seamore, stand down. The the specter does not exactly stand down, but it stops moving towards you. And as you say that, several other specters appear in other crypts. There it there is. Something that is at least holding them when you do that. Uh, I will take a cautious step back from the ghost that's standing in front of me. It remains watching no... you, but it does not attack. It's like it's watching to see what will happen. I will say, I will continue speaking in Celestial. Are you all castle enters? There's a long pause, and the one that you are looking at slowly nods, but doesn't say anything. Uh, Arjani is the right word? Yeah, descendants, okay. Your progeny has desecrated your family line, your gods. We're looking for something to help rectify this. There again is a long and felt... pause and a long spectral arm reaches up and you think it is pointing at you and then you realize it is pointing beyond you down the hall. Oh. Cash. Yeah, I'll look around and I see that there's more ghosts. I will be very cautious walking past them to make sure I do not disturb their coffin or their sarcophagi as you walk past really? each one of these ghosts they all pick up their long arms and point to the south all right there's two doors or three i can't see if that there, i can't see what well i'm in the wall uh, it looks like there's there two are doors. there are two closed tomb areas here uh, sealed doors stone doors that are are closed again it looks like you might have to push a little bit but the doors would probably open with just general force nothing unusual cash and will investigate those since he's been trailing behind shepherd this entire time feeling yes, a little please. sorry about him yes please i do not want to get burned again <laughs> Riley's just watching the door. He's making sure this thing doesn't shut on you guys. <laughs> oh. He doesn't detect, totally clear. Yep. Totally clear. He doesn't detect anything abnormal on these doors. And however, this other one. Oh. However, the door, you guys can clearly see that the door that Shepard is in front of, unlike the one that Cash is in front of, the one that uh, Shepard's in front of has an unmelted symbol of Seamorph on it. There is, it is the tomb that uh, Cashin is looking at as a plain stone door. Well, I guess this one here, and he turns around, is the one we're looking for. Perhaps step back once more time, and I will try it. And this one, I'm not going to actually try to, I'll just go ahead and use full force, try to push it open. Uh, it slides back, and you realize that it's on a kind of a roller system, that it depresses, and then you have to roll it sideways. But with not a great deal of effort, you are able to roll these rollers to the side on it. Ooh. There is a, a ghost that rises up 
out of a very decorated sarcophagus. The sarcophagus has uh, uh, a golden um, plated image on it of a very handsome noble holding a weapon, a mace in its hand, and there is like uh, a halo image of light around this head, and on the chest plate, which is a full plate mail chest plate that this heroic looking character is wearing, there is a symbol of Seamorph molded into this chest plate, and he is standing there heroically holding a, uh, a mace that also has rays of light shown streaming out from it, and a shield also with the symbol of Seamorph on it. The ghost that rises up out of this coffin bears a striking resemblance to the image that you see molded on this coffin. You are the one that rests here. There is a long pause, and he merely watches you. He doesn't say anything at this point. I don't try to make any attempts to move towards him or try to grab anything. I believe you have something that we seek. Again, he's just waiting. The ghost looks to be in almost a defensive posture, but not quite. He is prepared to do action if needed, is how I would describe it. Uh, Cashin will speak up. Noble spirit. Once mighty lord of castle and turned water deep. We beseech thee to, to give up thine, thine holy weapon, for for a noble purpose, to right the wrongs of your family, and to. This his head comes up when you say right the wrongs of the family. The ghost's head comes up out of a. He was kind of down in a, prepared sort of, and his head comes up almost startled as you say this. We seek, we seek only thine weapon to put an end to their nefarious scheme. In whose name do you act? I act on the behalf of Waterdeep. So... Say, my heirs. Um, what does that mean? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just a little confused there for a moment. His heirs say the same thing. <laughs> I have fought I... for the city. I... I have I'm of this city. I have fought for it. And and because I fought for it, your your descendants wronged me greatly. The ghost head shifts I, from side to side. In whose name do you fight? If I may, Mr Mr. Ghostman. <laughs> uh, I fight for the Emerald Enclave. Do you know my associates to be defenders of those who cannot defend themselves? I fight in Seamorph's name. In Seamorph's name, you are welcome. For they will not speak the name in these halls. And he looks from one to the other of you, just kind of waiting to see from there. Apparently, Seamorph is what he was waiting for. The current lord and lady do not. 
I believe their children can be set back on the correct path. I feel it. Not yet corrupted are they. Pure of heart, but given to the Lord of Hells for their own wealth. It must be stopped. Destroy the hideous deformity they made of Seamorph in her very halls and use the mace to end it. We will. In the name of Seamorph. He nods and there is a slight lifting of the hand to the heart. Then our guard has been completed. We can go, my brothers. And all of the ghosts and specters slowly fade out of sight. Uh, go up to the sarcophagi. Uh, you said the weapon is on. No, the, the, the no, it's not. It's on in the, it. it the, it's, in. it's a molded picture it's, it's a mold. of okay. the of uh, a mace weapon. Now, um, uh, Golor had described a knight's weapon as being a uh, a great sword. This is clearly only a one-handed weapon, and it is a mace. So, either he must have been in error, or he pieced together things incorrectly, or whatever. But this is a mess that is showing here. Being my background, City of the Dead, I will do with the utmost carefulness and respect to open the sarcophagi. There is a suit of armor laying inside. The body that once inhabited it is dust. There is not even bones left in the sarcophagus. It has faded completely into dust. The suit of armor has the symbol of Seamorph boldly emblazoned on its chest and laying across the chest as if it was once held by a hand is a mace that shines slightly with its own light. I will carefully reach for the mace, still keeping an eye, making sure that I'm, you know, no ghost is around and I'm trying to do it with like the utmost reverence to the body, or I guess the remain of the body that is ash and dust. When Shepard's hand lays upon the mace, he feels an almost thrill of consecration and holiness come across it. Oh, <laughs> I, they would hear the, and then I just, I raise the mace. All right. I thought that, I thought we were looking for a sword, but, uh, well, let's hope we are, let's hope that Golor is just wrong. Guys, what are you doing? It's really boring over here. <laughs> <laughs> and the the armor would strike you as having that that same kind of feel as you as your hand barely touches on it. It's same sort of feel to it. The magic armor. In Seomorph's name, uh, he says nonchalantly. I'll uh, set the mace aside, and I'm gonna go ahead and start taking the plate armor piece by piece and no ghosts come up pack. yep no ghosts come up nobody disturbs you as you do it with reverence put that in my pack and i'm also gonna because you said the mace is also giving off light very slight amount of light yes radiant because light. of that i'm gonna yeah because of that i'm gonna also put that into my pack because we don't want anyone catching us okay i will say that at this point you are carrying your max because you've got a lot of heavy armor on uh yep. in that pack now all right let's get out of here 
guess. But wait for people to move so that I can get out. Now, what he do you you got what he asked you that what he wanted you to do with the mace, right? To redeem their name in their god's name. So redeem the castle in the castle in the name, name of... by destroying the the abo- the statue of abomination. I may have said it in different words, but that's what I was. Oh, statue. I did not see any statue before. Ooh. It's either talking about the door or it's talking about the picture of Asmodeus. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Clearly, because there but is it was no clearly statue. said statue. It clearly said the statue. It did not say image, it said statue. Yeah, and I don't recall seeing any statue here, so was there a statue uh was there a statue in the room of people chanting? Yes. You didn't, you didn't see it very clearly, but there was a very tall statue at what would be the head of the room. All right, so it said to destroy the statue, and there's a statue where those cultists were. How many cultists were in there? Um, the best, Madam DM. The best you would have seen, just kind of peeking over the railing, and you don't know about what might have been under the balcony if there's more under the balcony but you were able to see seven people in robes that were in the middle of the room there was also looked like somebody that was either standing against or chained to a large pillar that was up at the front of the room near the statue Hmm. i counted uh seven maybe eight but the eighth was um they looked like they were chained. Couldn't get a good look at them. I think that we should at least... There's only seven. With the four of us and that element of surprise, I think we can do it. But that would ruin our invisibility. I myself will be fine. Okay, wait, time out. What exactly were they doing? What did they say? Like, they were... why with all the chanting? They were practicing some sort of ceremony. Did you notice any markings on the ground? A circle of some kind? Madam DM? No. No. I think they're going to paint those later. Or this isn't the place where they're going to do it. Well, either way, the statue is there. shouldn't do this we, we've got what we came for we should just leave you got a point we could always do this later i mean yeah i feel bad for the bozo on the pillar but you know grand grand scheme of things you know we did one life also just make a deal with a ghost man mental connection to, to nakri brutal smasher we are hoping that they are soon to claim the object it would be unfortunate if they started something that we are unable to assist with (laughs) i'm actually while we're talking i'm gonna take the mace out and look at it oh i I didn't see that at all i am gonna go out well i actually i would say is the coast clear for me since i'm not invisible oh that reminds me okay so we got two ways we can do this. One, Shepard, you give the mace over to little boy Blue here. He can do his bug trick, and he's assured to get out with items. I can then, uh, presto changeo, you back invisible, and we can, the three of us can try to sneak out, assured that, you know, the items are escaped. Or I can just turn you invisible, and the four of us can try to get out of here together. Let's try that second one. But first, I want to try something. Is, is it clear for me to go out? Yeah, looks clear. You see no one in these halls at this point. I Take look... a quick peek down both hallways. Do I see anything? It, he, she already said there's no one. Um, froze again. I do look at this picture, and I'll take that mace out. I mean, I, I'm under the assumption it's a magic mace that needs attunement, but I'm still going to try to do something, and I'm just going to point the mace at the picture. 
the mace. See if anything happens. Basically, you feel like its power is sort of reacting to it, but it's it. You are basically playing with magnets that are opposite polar kind of. They're not attracting. They are not it's enjoying polarity. each other. Yeah, they're they're they're. Their polarities don't like now the the magnet similarity ends with the fact that it would be dissimilar poles and they would attract. But in this case, the mace is like not wanting to put a Golar image into it. It's it's sort of horrified by the picture, but it's not. It doesn't have sentience. I'm 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 essentially asking. Well, well, seeing if you know if there's like you know if it shoot lightning, can it? Do something from a distance. Not I'm assuming it doesn't. If not with that picture, it doesn't seem to want to do anything with the picture itself. Okay, I was gonna see if, like if there's a way for me to destroy the statue from a distance. I'm okay with doing that and then causing chaos down below. But hold on, I'm going to chaos. right now. I'm going to give you personally. going to give just you access in magic items under your character area. I'm going to give it to you. But you are not attuned to it. You are right. Right. You able to find it? Oh, there we go. I'm going with what I'm changing here. I'm going to say that you can adjust the light emission similar to what that sword did in the previous game. And I missed the sun sword. I'm under the assumption I don't have the effect of this right now, though. That's correct. correct. You are not attuned to it. All right, let's do the second option, really, and, and I will tell, I will keep my word, it's just that I'm not going to be able to do it today. Okay, uh, that's ominous, but you know what, fine. We will destroy the statue at a later date. Sounds good. Okay, so in order to do this because I can't cast the spell and remain invisible myself. So what's got to happen is you see Relian fade back into view, and unfortunately he's got to use that third level spell slot. If it, oh well, but I still have another one. Okay, so that's good. One of his uh, precious third level spell slots to cast this at the third level, and both he and the shepherd fade once more into the shadows. All right, so you guys are all invisible again, and I take it you are heading back upstairs. Immediately, yes. All yeah, right. double time it. All right, so first I'll put you up on the next floor up where you came from, and then you are going back up through the cellar? Mm-hmm. Okay. The chanting has stopped in the hall, the big chamber, uh, and it sounds more just like instructions and various pieces of information now. People seem to be moving around a bit as if they are finishing up with what they were doing. So you are now free to move around the cellar. I've got I've got the wrong one. There's two pictures I've got here because I divided it on two sheets, and I never know which one I need. That's the one I need. All right, let me put the ribbon over on the other one, and that's the one where you need to be. And you are in the cellar again. All right. So how are you going to come out when you got down here? Obviously, you had. A problem with the fact that you were having to distract guards to get through that 
that doorway under the stairs. What are you going to do as you go out? You're going to re rely on your invisibility? I think so. Yeah, we, yeah, Raelian could probably cause another, Raelian or one of us can cause another small distraction. We can uh, open the thing and walk out and then close it before anyone notices. As you come up the stairs in and slowly open the door under the stairs, you notice that the uh, group that was upstairs were are now leaving, heading down into the to the welcoming area, the entrance area that you came into that has the harpsichord and so forth. And they are preparing to leave the manor. Uh, I'll put you back over here. And you are now there coming out of the stairs in the middle. Meanwhile, the group of gals are more or less coming out of the kitchen this way and starting out as you come out. The, the party groups together forms up as you come out of the stairs, but you can't be seen. No one knows you are there with them. Um, Gashin will then whisper very quietly to them, we should go outside. I'm, I'm already moving without even saying anything. Mm-hmm. All right. So everybody is back on track now. You are back. You're free to move about the estate. Um, Ferris is going to go into the reading room where he last saw Nakri and Epiphany. Well, they're right in front of you. Are you looking for them? Oh. They're right there in front of you. you I said the party groups up again. They're together. Okay. Uh, Varys is going to try to sneak over and tap Nakri on the shoulder. Uh. Hmm. How, how about uh, are, are you still? In, are you still invisible? Yes. Yes. I'll just you. I won't have any reaction to the uh, tapping. Is the is this a uh, door still open? The front door is not open. The door right there oh, into the foyer is open. No, the office. The office has been closed. Oh, all right. Uh, forgot about something. What? No, it's that's out of character. Oh, okay. Uh, but yes, Ferris will tap Nakri on the shoulder. And be uh, aware that Lady Castellanter is talking with them a spell and is actually the one speaking with her at the moment, but is actually, she's right there basically saying her goodbyes. Yep, okay. Uh, three very deliberate about a second in between each tap. So she knows it's not just like some sort of random thing. No, Cree, you should get that armor looked at. <laughs> I've been meaning to uh, get this little thing updated. It's been in my family for so long. Uh, actually, what time is it? I think I have another engagement I need to do. It has been approximately um, an hour and 45 minutes since we uh, left. Uh, <laughs> I was going and to be less precise still... and say almost two hours, but you're right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Ep Epiphany uh, knows exactly how long they're in whatever form they're in. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, I do actually. And we do in. This is a uh, masquerade, am I correct? Oh, yes. Yes, quite. Uh, yes, I do hope you have a wonderful costume. Uh, I better go make sure that I can procure one that will not necessarily stand out, but at least be most most uh, appropriate for the theme. Is there a particular theme, actually? You will absolutely have to find something that suits you perfectly, my lady. Then I better be going before the store is closed. Well, as to the theme, uh, since it is in relation to God's day, I would suppose it would be something related to the gods. But other than that, was the um? Hmm. Oh, sorry, it's out of character. 
Um, what was the kitchen this way? Kitchen is north of you. Kitchen isn't north of me. Oh. This is the uh, dining lady. room here, and then the kitchen was over to the side. My lady, we we do need to make sure that uh, the gentlemen are all rounded up. If I remember them from earlier today, they will likely have found their way to the kitchens, and I will I, I will go fetch them for you. Ah, please. Uh, and do you need you need to make sure that Ferris is keeping up with the. His winemaking, actually. Of course, of course. Um, if you will pardon me, uh, my lady Castellanter, I will uh, evict them from your premises. <laughs> will the group of you guys take a hint from what Morel, Mariel is basically saying? Up into the... <laughs> uh, if we hear that, yeah, I think that's... I think, we're, I think at this point we're talking like loud enough that if you're within within hearing distance you should be able to hear it not like yeah. shouting it but just being oh crap we have to go make sure this 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 is done it's like listing off things of like <coughs> round up round up our little minions that well not minions right. but round up our little cadre uh, um isn't felix amongst them we make to, uh, we need to make sure he gets his invitation don't we uh so does that mean we we're all here and we uh Gentlemen, take off our disguises yeah, it's pretty much, gentlemen, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure I've been looking all over you for the past kind of like, for the past How five did they minutes. get get behind me when I came out of there? But uh, there are, there is another room to the side that's actually a smoking room that you would um, possibly have come out of there. There's a lot of portraits of the family in there on the walls and on easels and things, and it would be, have been possible that you were in that side room. Uh, Relian is going, is, is, he's going to find a secluded corner away from prying eyes, drop his invisibility, and then disguise himself as the, the, the old elven man again. And says, he's just going to start mumbling to himself, one of the finest gardens I've ever seen, I tell you, perfect grounds for a picnic. Mmm, <laughs> very quiet. And and thankfully, Cashin is still in his dis in his own disguise since it never wore off. Well, come along, boys. And Ariel will clap and start leading them towards uh, Knocker to hopefully get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah, before mm -hmm. before this wears off, quick. Yes, the, the it's about to strike mm -hmm. midnight, and my glass shoe yeah. is falling off. I uh, lady, the lady, my, I feel that I'm getting I, a bit overused to the to the direct sunlight. Ah, yes. Please go outside and and uh, procure the carriage. We'll beat you again. Just a moment. Felix okay. passes by uh, the lady and uh, gives a smile and a nod and a bow to her before leaving. Oh, uh, another day, Miriam. madam. And Sorry. she will. Very delicately, as uh, the the old man will come by, she will hand out one of these engraved, uh, cal 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 calligraphed invitations over to him with a kind of, I made this for you. So he would have his invitation. Um, before Muriel departs, Knocker will also, whatever cloak or jacket that Knocker is wearing, he will take it and put it over their shoulders to help block out the sun. Oh, thank you, my lady. You're much too kind. Um, and, uh... Mistress Castellanter, thank you very much for your graciousness. And... I can't wait to see you at the party. I will look forward to everyone enjoying the experience. <laughs> And Felix will escort her out by hand. As Shepard leaves, does he actually notice the Castle Lantern children anywhere nearby? Not in the house, no. Okay. Or not in this floor of the house, at least. Okay. We have an objective. We're gonna do it. <laughs> yep. We need to get the hell out of here. All right.
right, so Lady you guys, Rescuro, let's go. You uh, you make it out to the carriage and close the door behind you, and with a heaving sigh of relief, you Esvel knocks on the roof to indicate that her carriage driver should take off, and so you mm. head off down the street. And hey, as soon as your sweet time, we need to go. As soon, it, it, as soon as we're as soon as we're out of distance of the uh, manor, Cashin will take off the uh, his hat and revert back to his normal form. He's like, "Gods, a few close calls there. I'm pretty sure I nearly killed myself with a few uh, unlocking of traps." Oh, a pity, Mister Cashin. I much preferred your disguise. Oh, don't worry. Felix will be back. Relian's hunched over ma old man visage uh, shimmers and fades as he's once more the blue garbed cat and everybody loves. It's, what about me, Happy? Love is a strong word. <laughs> oh. You are always perfect just the way you are, Mr. Relian. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need to go to the open lord right now. Cash in. Oh. Do we really want to make it that direct that we're going her, to her so soon, or do we want to drop a note that we're coming, we're going to see her ASAP? Yes, we should uh, send works. a letter. We should send a letter to her. And uh, Cashin will then discreetly pull out uh, one of their prizes. How? Varys has the amulet and Shepard has the mace. Wait, I thought I had the amulet. No, we all gave it to Varys because he was going to be Plan B escape route. Oh, right, right. Uh, you you have the, a, a scroll bow. I don't remember what it was. But you oh, right. It. Bank scroll. Yes, uh, so, uh, well, besides these, besides those, we I also found uh, this promissory. And Cashin uh, opens up the tube and takes out the scroll. Nakari will share what she saw in the uh, me the uh, open journal. I uh, can't remember all the details off the top of my head, but if you remember from two weeks ago, what uh, I had uh, skimmed over and had Epiphany take a quick glance at also. Yeah, um, just so we continue to keep this all hush hush, sh shadowy boogity kind of thing, um, Needless to say, we got uh, we got our other two, as CC pointed out, prizes. But um, we saw some things down there, and um, yeah, we we need to inform the Open Lord of a few things soon. Do you think that this this party might actually be uh, dare I say one shit show of a trap? Oh, let's say this. We should tell uh, her grace that um, she should warn all of her allies and all of the lords and nobles of Waterdeep who are of a somewhat decent nature to stay away. Varys pulls out the vial something. of poison and that he took from the cellar. Would it be possible? Pet Pets on Epiphany has returned. We are saddened now. And Epiphany holds up the shreds of their dress. <laughs> oh. we'll, oh. we'll see next time if we can get it enchanted to handle shapeshifting here. That would be lovely. Would it be... It would be interesting if the Open Lord would be able to curate those who do not go and increase her own influence in the process. Oh. Her allies could remain absent. Her enemies could go. I mean, and it, you, it's... you seek influence. Brutal Smasher, perhaps this would allow you an opening. This would. I wouldn't grant it. Granted, if we can get all those people into one place in the Troll Skull, I mean, it would be a damn shame that they all came down with some terrible, terrible stomach bug the day of the party. It's a plague! Well, I mean, 
Granted, I don't want to actually make them sick, but uh, it would be a damn shame if they accidentally got stoked with stomach bugs. Poor Sam. He's having a real problem. <laughs> Hard, mm. Pardon out there in video land because my picture keeps jumping over into Brett's box or over into Kyle's picture box over there. One of them, I'm not sure. So, so uh, when Cashin does uh, take out the scroll, does something else come out? No, there's n nothing but there's, I mean, there's a lot of information on this scroll. Uh, it's got page, book, and parcel number about what's owed and uh, that basically there's a lot of dirt involved in the sense of the um, the scroll has got the thumb on this individual very heavily with this with what they're holding i'm going to turn off the videos for a moment until that settles down because we get a lot of when we return back to the those of you who have the items should accompany us down to the cellar. One second. Uh, Could we restart the call to see if uh, Sam I'm can? Back. Oh, he's back now. Never mind. I just changed the call location. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. Discord is crap right now, people. Oh, we might have no. should have moved it to no before someone like oh, instead of myself start crapping out, probably should have been central, not east, but. Okay, let's, we're working on it. It works. We can arrow hear each other. Let's keep going. Yeah, uh -huh. works, fine. works fine for me. Shut up. <laughs> I'm so yeah, be just... a little bit early I anyway these, brother. because uh, we're at a um, uh, basically at a good break point here for preparation for what you're going to do. So we, you'll probably head back, I would assume, to the Troll Skull or whatever to get yourself resituated before you head out to Castle Waterdeep or whatever. Probably. Yeah, essentially essentially what Epiphany wants to do is just look at these things and use Golor to determine, are these the correct ones? And and Shepard can also put on his pimp and new plate armor. No, he can't. I don't have the strength for it. Nakri can put Nakri. on her pimp and new plate armor. Oh, yeah. no, you, yeah. can put, you can put it on, you'll just move at minus 10, and you can be yeah. used to that because, you know, you play a dwarf in the other game. Yeah. <laughs> you also can't cast spells, and your attacks would be at disadvantage. So, like no, I said, he, no, he, no, no, wait, I that's can't. for if no, you don't he, have proficiency. Well, gra gra do grave clerics have proficiency on heavy armor? I, I, I think clerics so. in general have proficiency on heavy armor. No, it's, no. it's, it's no. a domain no. thing. Oh, it's, well, it's a domain thing. Benefits. Okay, oh, oh god. Right, let's, let's, this let's is, save this for all of them. Why not just give it to Nakri? Yeah, yeah, someone someone did say that. Okay. They do not, that's what I said. Even but, even, even if I do, I'm giving it to Nakri. Yeah. Uh, one, my I did say give it to Nakri. Two, Grave Clerics do not have proficiency with heavy armor. Well, there you go. Now it's definitely Nakri's. Alright. Okay. So, we are speeding away. We just robbed one of the most powerful families in Faerun of two of their greatest artifacts and possibly discovered a very heinous scheme in the making. We just stole your crap. And we and we avoided combat the entire time. Right. Impressive. Oh, yeah, oh, God. we're sitting here just waiting for you to do a few things. Oh my, oh my God. Epi. Rel and Epi were imprisoned for stealing magical artifacts. Now we are heroes for stealing magical artifacts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the turns have tabled. And Cashin and Shepard <laughs> are going to screw over the people that screwed over them. So, okay, so so w would Epiphany get get the ping from Golo like eventually when yeah. they look at the thing? Once that these you are, are able to you settle items. down and at, you're not worrying about whether there's anybody on your tail or whatever, uh, Golor would be fascinated by this mace and just all over it, uh, looking at it. Oh, it's not a sword. I why, I thought, sure, a hero of Waterdeep, as great as this must have been, would surely have carried a great sword, but it's a mace. Why, he, he must have been a paladin. Why, this is amazing. 
Mariel in the brain walks up and pats on his shoulder and says, you're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> but he's like an archaeologist who has just had a new finding laid on his desk that he's never been able to catalog before, and he is just going completely research ape over it. I feel Rel and Golor would get along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys get back safely and can regroup at the Troll Skull Inn. We will end it a little bit early here, except I need to look something up real quickly because I need to make sure exactly where we are. I would be spending the time needed while everyone's preparing to go see the open lord to attune to the mace. We are now level six. Ah. Doubtful. And man can dream. Alright, so the party, this is currently, alright, so you have uh, basically six days until the party. Cool. Um, that's plenty of time to go do the other thing to, to go do the thing that we were intending to do with all this with all these items. <laughs> and then once we find the thing that we had to get all these things for, then we can stop the evil thing. No, see, you know what we do? We just plan for us going to unlock the door for while all the people are at the party. Don't bring plans into this. We got this far without plans. You bring plans into this, we're gonna screw up. Anyway, yeah, we, we, we're we just going to wing it. Yep, you've got the three keys, and you've got the location, but you've got basically a promise laid on one of the items. So the thing will be whether the, the magic will enact if you have not carried out the will of the person who gave it to you. Oh, right, the mace. We have to destroy the statue. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things you earlier. So we may actually still have to go back to the castle enters and wreck all of their stuff. Yeah, but this time <laughs> we can try to get like city guard to help. We do have like if... uh, we do have an ally now in the city guard. Uh, uh, not, not, not only just that, but uh, as a side note, like if we do prove from what you guys have saw guys have seen to the, um, to the, oh my god. Open uh, Lord. Open Lord, thank you. My brain is, like, shutting off on me. Um, we find a conspiracy. Oh, no, not, you know, and sorry for sounding, using the wrong terms during this weird climate. Um, n knock, knock, it's a raid. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with that. Consider... We, well, I mean, they can just easily be like, you know, anybody can produce a poison and symbols and stuff like that and say they came from the house. I well, mean, but we, we oh, have truth. We, we have the plate armor of Siamor. You don't know anyone else that worships Siamor outside of the castle enters. That kind of uh, just proves we... everybody noble. That, yeah, that, that, yeah. that would not hold up. The uh, yeah, Siamor basically, is basically generally the, the, the household one, not the overriding deity, it's a lesser deity, but she is, like, in every noble's household, there is a small yeah. shrine okay. to see a Like, pretty much what we're gonna have to do is, like, at the party, like, throw, an, throw a dead imp in front of them, <laughs> in front of everybody, and be like, this was upstairs, I was just trying to use the bathroom. <laughs> hmm. No, Actually, we have... I've kind of got an oh. idea. Look, I we also can... have an idea. We can try to, and Varus will bring this up in character, but it's quicker to do OSC. We can try to use influence. I still have two points of influence that I can use to get a meeting with Open Lord, who is currently our ally. We have a cleric in the party who can cast Zone of Truth, and she can have one of her personal attendants on hand to verify that that is the spell that is cast, and we can give an, a full report of a full report of what happened. Tomorrow, because I don't have it uh, uh, Tomorrow. prepared. 
But there's six days until then. Uh, so. I am. Uh, I will. Uh, I believe we will have a game next week. We will be on the holiday weekend, and it may affect some of our players. I also know that Mike is starting a new job coming up, which will sh wildly shift his hours. And he is a little worried that Varys may not be able to stick around if the hours are not kind to him. So I have one more week ear. guaranteed. Okay, so I'm going to try to have a game on the 4th of July, for those of you watching out there, hoping to have that game so that we can get Mike in it. And I don't think there's too many of you cashing. I believe was possibly going to be out, but I think you decided to... No, I'm an in. Okay. So I guess we've got a full party, so we'll try to get this in under the wire before Mink has to start new schedules, and we'll see what happens. But that's... So it looks like we're going to have a game next week. If it turns out that we're not here, it's because something fell apart at the last minute, but at this point we intend to have a game. So we will... See you next week on 4th of July weekend. Have a safe and sane 4th. Don't go burning out down any roofs or anything, throwing sparklers around or anything. Be careful with those firecrackers under the cans. They can explode in your face. Be reasonable, people. And don't Be stab smart. your cousins and don't stab your cousins with spirit sparklers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do do sane things. Use your brain. And that way we can see you the week after because you won't be in the hospital with burns. So I'm going to say good night from Crohn's Crucible. Thanks mm -hmm. for joining us tonight. I hope everybody had a wonderful time and we will see you next week. Good night, all. But see you next bye, time. everybody. And remember, if someone ever asks you, are you crazy? Simply reply, yes, just like that. End of discussion. Nine times out of ten, they will leave you alone, and those few who don't are worth getting to know. <laughs> this is true.